today I am to go through a full tutorial with ChatGPT 4.0 and luckily last week I was preparing for three different trainings I had where I was presenting to well over 100 executives specifically in the sales and go-to-marketing teams and I had to spend close to maybe 12 to 14 hours prompting, working in ChatGPT 4.0. So what I wanted to do is break down this real quick visual for you from A to Z so you can see what's possible. I'll start off with some really simple tactics that you can leverage instantly, but at the same time, I wanna give you a full understanding of how you could take something very simple and then create an amazing end result for full work product, specifically in terms of implementing ChatGPT 4.0 for business, for work, for your life. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Staley. I have grown businesses uh, and multiple different levels in sales, sales leadership. Now I'm a CEO. And what I'm doing is helping companies with AI skill transformation. One of the specific examples though I wanted to talk to you about today is that when I was growing uh, a business unit, I had to start an enterprise sales group from scratch, grew that from zero to 30 million in ARR in five and a half years. And we only had four salespeople. Now, the really unique thing about that was I was so focused on what I was doing at the time, which is absolutely amazing, but I was focused on customer acquisition, my team, that I was so blinded that that was even a really good task or a really good result that I was getting. Once I left, I found out that that was uh, something that very few companies have done or even venture capital companies um, typically strive for that. And that's with a huge infusion of capital that I did not have. So fast forward last year, I was in New York presenting at what's called the SaaS Open. Nathan Lacka puts on the show. There's close to 1,200 different executives in the SaaS space. And most of these are CEOs, COOs, CROs, CMOs, you name it. Pretty much every acronym you could from the executive suite was there. And I had a session specifically on how I achieved that result of growing from zero to 30 million in five and a half years. And the one question that I asked was basically, okay, how many people in the room know what the top 20% of their customer average contract value is? And the reason why I did that is because that fact alone helped me unlock a strategy that helped me effectively double the deal size that my team had every year and 1,000x our largest deal size. And what I mean by that, deals would go from 20,000 a year average to 40,000, to 80, to 160, to 320 and so on and so forth. And so that simple strategy was something that I used to achieve those results with my team. And the reason why I'm bringing that story up is I believe ChatGPT 4.0 is kind of that same capability that you have, right? Specifically with what I'm gonna show you today. So let me get right into it. I know I gave you a quick rundown. Let me share this, share my screen. And the awesome thing about it, or maybe it's unawesome, if you don't like it, that's okay. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this all in real time. So as you can see, this is ChatGPT 4.0. Uh, basically, what you need to do is you need to have it identified within here. Now, you do have to pay for this. So you either have to be a Plus user, a Teams user, or an Enterprise user, which we're starting to roll this out to. And as you see here, it says Temporary Chat. If I did this, if I click this on, this is basically like incognito mode in Google Chrome, okay? But we're not going to really mess with that today. The other thing you're going to see up here is it says Memory Off. Okay, and the reason why I did that is because I do work for a lot of different organizations. Like I said, I was presenting to well over 100 people last week alone, specifically with business executives. But if you look in the settings here and you wanna do it, one of the things that you're gonna see is personalization, and this will do memory. So you could have custom instructions as well, which is basically giving you an understanding about how you'd like to be talked to and how you'd like to respond to it. That was done in ChatGPT 4.0, so this has been available for a while. However, one of the things that it had as well is this, this newer uh, that got rolled out gradually is memory, okay? So these memory is basically like, uh, what it'll do is it'll pick up pieces and in, in components from the chat history that you have and then start to customize it, uh, kind of like an ongoing custom instructions. Other things that are new, this, this unique interface, but let's get to it because I wanna show you how to basically create this from A to Z, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create what's called synthetic data. So what synthetic data is, Create, you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about, and I'll explain it. Synthetic data on an annual sales results report for a $20 million, let's say $20 million, why not, uh, SaaS company. Okay. Now, what I'm asking it to do is I'm asking for it to create a report that's basically in a 
uh, that mimics what would happen in a normal business area. So what you're seeing here is I'm not speeding this up. This is in real time. So this is one of the things that Sam Altman did not talk about. About He did mention about how fast it was. So I think this is great. Um, and I'm going to say, please do it month by month. Oops, I actually hit a short key. So please do it month. Okay. So now what I'm having to do is recreate that on kind of like a month to month basis and have it, um, actually, I think it, it was asking me if I want to see visualization of the data. So that was one of the things that, that it's actually doing right now, which is why it's analyzing. Now, what you're going to see is it's going to create this on a month to month basis. Pretty cool, right? Now, once again, look how fast this is. Now, so that's the other thing, okay? So what I would say is the speed of which it operates, the quality is higher. The other thing is it has these kind of like follow-up prompts. And this is something that wasn't really there in the later or the previous model, but it says like, can you visualize this data? What's the churn impact, right? So let's do this. Can you visualize this data? And this is one of the things they updated their data analysis tool. And so what the data analysis tool is, this is going to effectively take uh, what you have in there and analyze it like a data scientist would. So they could look at trends, patterns, create graphs. So one of the unique things about this is it'll be able to give you insights and this is all working in real time. Um, and look at this, look how crazy this is. Like I didn't even ask it for these specific types of charts. Hold on, hold on, look at this. Monthly sales and total customers, right? New customers acquired. Monthly average revenue per user. It looks like that might be off. Okay, now I'm saying, okay, show me a yearly growth chart or compare quarterly trends. Okay, so let's just do that. So this is, like I said, one of the capabilities that, you, that you're going to have in here is it's going to prompt you really solid follow-up questions. And as a result, you're going to get better answers. Now watch, it's basically putting this in here in terms of what the visualization gave us the quarterly report, the rundown. And I'm going to show you something else really cool that it's, it's able to do. So if you look at it, step one, we had it create data. Step two, look how fast this is going. Like this is what's insane about it. So it's blowing these up, right? Okay. So here's, here's what it created for me. We've been doing this. I've been recording this literally for three minutes. It created the data, which you can obviously import your own data. That could be an Excel. It could be CSV. You could even look at like PDFs or Word docs. Uh, and then what you're seeing here is that it created a report. Okay, so from that report, uh, it also created visualizations, which like, how sweet is this, right? These visuals. Now, the interesting thing, and I haven't even gone this much into it, is to look at these different parts on the chart. So let's see what happens here. Okay, I think it just hovers and gives you the idea. Um, okay, here it is. Here's an example. Switch to static chart. Okay, let's see what happens here. This is one of the capabilities that we could look at. So we clicked on that. We have a static chart. And so I think what that means is like, all right, let's say I want to, I want to update this and let's say it's uh, oh, maybe I can't update it. Maybe I can't update it. It's, it's trying to let me, yeah, I'm trying to update it. It will not let me update it. Okay. So maybe this is still kind of a, a feature that's a work in progress, but like you see this little switch to static chart. I've never seen that pop up before. So what you're, you're discovering some of this in real time with me. Now, the other thing is it has this here where basically it's got a variable. And so what we could do is you could change the colors in here, which is they never had this capability before, right? Um, I thought that was pretty impressive. You could download the chart. This is the other thing that they did not have this capability. Okay, so now we have this, basically this whole graph on the side and we're looking at this. And so now I'm like, all right, cool. Um, can you create four different visuals for this data, right? And let's, I, like I told you before, I'm like kind of the crappiest typer in the world. I'm okay, but I need to use the voice option more. Uh, okay, so what it's doing is it's burning through here now and it's creating different visualization capabilities. So we have like super cool um, synthetic data to insights, and then I'm gonna even ask more, but now what it's doing is it's creating more examples of what this is gonna look like. And once again, this is all in real time. So this is like so freaking fast and I'm testing the other tools and they're not operating this fast. Now, most of you've probably heard about Microsoft Build, which is coming out. So there's all these Microsoft Copilot announcements that came out. And from what I understood, I was talking to the support of Microsoft Copilot and they identified to me that effectively uh, oh, 
this isn't a very good. So let's let's compress this down and see because it basically just did that. Oh, okay, here we go. So we got a lot of different graphs. So bottom line, I was talking to them. One of the things they say is ChatGPT 4.0 is supposed to be introduced into Microsoft Copilot in about a month from now. So we're in the middle or towards the end of May. So supposedly in mid-June, it's supposed to, to get kind of put under the hood and have that capability. So as you can see, here's a couple of different visuals. And then it, it gave some really interesting insights there. Now, one of the other things that you could do that most people forget about, and this is kind of embedded in the training, is you could change the model. But the other thing that I could do is, let's say I didn't really like like what the result came back with. Let's say if I go back to the top, okay? So I said, can you compare these quarterly trends? So that was my previous. You can go back and edit it, right? So cue back, go back. Um, instead of creating quarterly trends, can you identify patterns of opportunity and areas of concern, right? So this is how you could start getting those data insights, which is well beyond like knowledge when you're just looking at it from the naked eye, unless you've done it a lot. And this is how cool it works. Now I just went back and I edited it. And now what it's doing is identifying. So basically it kind of took past that map or the visuals that I created and it's doing this. So what it's talking about is consistent growth, stable, ARPU, which is average revenue per user, strong sales performance. Okay, now areas of churn, churn, fluctuation, new customer acquisition, sales dip in specific months, right? Okay, now check this out. Now act like I implemented all of your recommendations, right? And this is what I'm saying. So check this out. Add another column with the projections of what would happen. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're taking that from here and we're basically having it predict possibly, okay, if we implemented what you're talking about, what is that gonna do in terms of the big scheme, the big picture of everything, okay? So now it's created the table and it's got this in here, but at the same time, it's created another basically example of this data of like with the projection. Now this is cool, it's gonna show it a total and Next, I'm going to say now visualize the two, two scenarios and write a summary of my recommendations to my CEO. Okay. So it's still building out here, but what you're going to see is here. Okay. So it's still building that out, finishing it up. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Talking about how fast you are. Now you're a little laggy, but I'm using this like smack in the middle of the day. So what I've noticed is there's sometimes performance balances, like if you use it in the day versus early in the morning versus at night. Okay, so it creates this whole area, really this whole chart. Okay, boom. All right, and you can scroll over here and you can see this. Oops, it's not even done. Okay, so here, and now it's what it's saying is, okay, these are what I think is gonna have. This is what the impact's gonna be. If you executed that, okay, and I said now visualize with my damn typo again. Okay, so here's the thing. Can you visualize the projected data? Or these are the proactive prompts that I love. Okay, so it's doing this. Can you visualize the proactive data? Once again, this doesn't need to be all around data, like doesn't need to be around reports. But what I would say some things that I noticed are really good is like the speed of the overall data, um, effectively analyzing the data. It does do pictures really fast as well. Uh, which was something that used to take a long time, specifically in Dolly. I'm not going to go over that right now because we're going a little bit long. But as you can see, it's populating all these in real time. So you have a true understanding of like how this looks like and these visuals are really freaking good. Like, I mean, look at this. These are like amazing in my opinion, right? And I could say, okay, now create a PowerPoint presentation from this data and your work, okay? So now what we're trying to do is <laughs> take it one step further and have it create the presentation. So we did all this work, we created an idea, um, basically looked at the data, analyzed the data, understood trends and patterns, and now we're basically having it execute this. And then we might be running into issue. I might be, I might be pressing the envelope too much. Let's see, I didn't do that, okay. Oh, it's analyzing. Okay, okay. That's why, that's why it's not. I, did, I missed this part here. So it's actually going through and identifying this. 
Look at this. So this is what it's building out like in code behind the scenes, which, you know, most people don't have the ability to do, but as you can see, it created a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So let's look at this. So now, and this is something new too. You could download it, right? Oops. I didn't wait for it to go. Okay. So let's download the file. Okay. So it's popping up. Oh, I hit, I hit three times. Uh, okay. Let's do this one. Let's cancel this, cancel this. I suck at that. Here we go. So it happens when you're not patient. Okay. So now I'm going to pull the PowerPoint that it pulled up and then I'm going to do the cherry on top, right? So like I said, this is a full tutorial. This video is a little bit longer. I didn't really intend it to be this long, but I get, I kind of geek out. I get super excited once I see what's, what's possible. All right. Now I do have Copilot as well outside of this, but I didn't even need to use it. So check this out. So it built this presentation for me. And one of the things that you could see here is you click on designer, right? And I could turn this into a sexy looking presentation, very simply and easy and even have an amazing boom. Look at that. So basically that's the whole kit and caboodle. I went from basically creating data, analyzing the data, reviewing the data, giving it my own insights, understanding ideas, trends, and opportunities. Then I transformed that into visuals. Then from the visuals, what I did is took that, transformed it into insights. Then those insights I transformed into a PowerPoint presentation. We all did that in like, I think it was like eight minutes. No, probably, probably like 10 minutes. So that just shows you how powerful this is. And we can go a lot, lot deeper on it. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I love doing these videos. I love sharing these insights with you because it's just, it excites me so much to be able to understand like how we can unlock freedom within our lives in different areas and basically, you know, less time, more sales, right? Those are the kind of the two areas. So thanks for joining me today and I will see you all on the next video.